You're such an asshole. Assholeconsulting.com. We have an interesting question. I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized, no, I just don't know these people because I kind of naturally screen out these people and I don't let them into my life. But I guess this is something that happens in the real world. And I, I thought Gen X would have dominated this field back when we were into our grunge phase and putting mascara on our eyes and dressing like grunge. I thought this, we would have not no, I guess the millennials have taken it. Or <laughs> IT guys or even IT girls who are unaware of that, and that is grooming and basic hygiene when working in the working world. So, uh, who writes? Sean writes. Hi Aaron, I'm requesting a video to stress in an extended manner the importance of appropriate appearance in the business world, as I believe it will help your viewers. Are you, are you calling my viewers like unhygienic and they don't have the basics of fashion? Are you going solely on how I dress when I do these videos? I believe that a lot of young professionals in, corporate env in the corporate environment are jeopardizing their career progression due to a lack of attention to detail in the following areas. Grooming, clothing style, physical maintenance, and communications, written and verbal. An example, I have often dealt with scenarios whereby the employer was removed from the company in some way due to being physically or verbally unpleasant, dressed in a trendy cultural slash social style in the workplace, or a combination of each. From my experience, <clears throat> often the result of such individuals has cost employers thousands of dollars of revenue, not to mention the employees their jobs. Do you agree with this from your experience? Kind regards, Sean. I have not seen that, and if it happened, I really didn't pay attention to it. And I think a lot of that had to do because of the industry I was working at in banking. It's very vain. Um, there, you got to wear suits. Because we're very important where we wear suits. Even though they're the dumbest motherfucking idiots. They're the biggest fucking parasites on the U.S. taxpayer. Except for like maybe, maybe somebody who had 16 illegitimate children. Um, it, it is. So that, that I think I was inoculated against. But let us talk about it. Because I do remember teaching economics and uh, in college. And there was a dress code. And we even had to bring in... A gr not a grooming specialist, but a fashion person, I think Joseph A. Banks or something, to come in and talk to these kids about basic shit. So, I, I don't even think this is for my audience, but to make it entertaining to my audience, I'm going to be truthfully honest and give you what your bosses are thinking when you dipshit millennials or you fat fucks come walking into work. Let's talk about grooming. <clears throat> um, this is a no-brainer. You shower, you shave, it's basic hygiene, you comb your hair, you have a clean haircut. Uh, unless your job is like the great Matt Baldoni and you are to play Barry Gibb, you cut. You do not have a crazy long haircut. Um, you know, and, and, and throw this bullshit out the window. When you leave college, all this cutesy, artsy, fartsy bullshit where you shave your half of your head, you look like Sinead O'Connor, and then the long hair, you dye it multiple color day, yeah, that shit goes out the fucking window. And that fucking loops in the goddamn ears that you fucking independent-minded people all seem to conformistly do, and piercing the nose and piercing the lips, and anything that isn't fucking normal, and you better motherfucking get used to that idea, that term called normal. Uh, if it isn't normal, uh, don't expect people to hire you. Your fucking tattoos coming down. It's the expresses. Fuck you. Right there. Right there. That's what the real world thinks of your fucking faggoty gay cartoon. Or not cartoon. Your, uh, what's it called? A tattoo. All right? Knock it the fuck off. All right? So, <clears throat> deodorant, showering, go if you're having trouble. What? How should I groom myself? Well, uh, watch. I hate to say it. Watch Friends. The reason, even though it's in the 90s, that kind of standard stuff has not gone out of fashion. Watch Leave It to Beaver. Um, you know, Hugh Beaumont, I think that was the actor. He was always suit, tie, hair done. I mean, God, oh my, is it really that bad that we got to tell you to shower shit and shit? Nobody likes stinky people. Stinky people, ugly and stinky people do not get promoted to CEO. Okay, go look at any CEO on the board of directors. Go look at the, the annual report of any, and they all stand and they whip their dicks up because they're the fucking executive team and they all pose. Not, not, not one morbidly obese person and not one stinky person. No one looks like Pigpen from the, from the Charlie Brown cartoons, all right? Clothing style, kind of related. <clears throat> you, what should I wear? Hmm, not what goes for shits and giggles on college campuses today. 
Men, it, it, and it depends on the dress code. God Almighty, they have fucking dress codes for you people. I remember this now. It's all coming back to me, like being in war and having these flashbacks. Um, they ha you know, There's business casual. And if you don't know what it is, look it up on the fucking internet. So there's business casual, your khakis, button shirt, tasteful blouse. For God's fucking sake, ladies, they even tell you how many inches it's got to be from your fucking knee if you're going to sport a dress or a shirt. Um... <clears throat> The, whatever loud colors for a while ago, neon green ties were in, in fact. No, no, you want to know what's in fashion? You know what's never gone out of fashion? Fucking what Cary Grant wore 60 years ago. That's what's never fucking gone out of fashion. Gray, black, boring suits. Look at Archer. Dress like Archer. Gray, black, boring suits. Don't dress like Lana, ladies, no. Um, and and he, I think a, a better overarching principle or philosophy we can, we can use here is you are not to make a statement. I know the vast majority of you millennials and Gen X fuck-ups have nothing going for you, and so you substitute this lack of worth or value in your life with things and flashy objects and, and, and some, some material items that you can do or things that you can do to your body to make you look edgy. So you're a fucking loser and you get a tattoo. You're, you're a fucking idiot and you get the hoop earrings. You're a fucking... A uh, depressed emo girl doesn't have any you pierce your fucking nose, you pierce your, you pierce your lip, or you pierce your tongue. Um, no one cares. Corporations and, and government employ. it's not just evil corporate America, it's government. They have to achieve efficiency. They have a job to get done. And to an element, there is, is conformity. Everything must, that's why we have processes, that's why you have the assembly line. And if you think the business world where you are paid by other people, other people's money to show up on time and add to a modicum of standards, not just in terms of work ethic, but presentation. Um, your personal beliefs and statements of expressions fucking ended with your last day of college. So knock it the fuck off, grow the fuck up. You can, you, when you're not being paid other people's time, because that's what you're paid. Other people had to sacrifice their time to give you, to earn the money to pay you. Right? They're not paying you money. They're paying you their time. You're on their time. That's where the phrase comes from. Well, you're on their time. You will do what they tell you to do within legal. And, and hey, I'm no big fan of employers. You watch any one of my other videos. <clears throat> um, and when you are done working, then you can stick whatever the fuck it is you want in your ear. Stick whatever you want up your nostril. Run around with your thumb up your ass for all I thought. You can pierce your fucking big toe. I don't care. That's what you could do in your private time. But when you are under the employ of an employer, you adhere to their rules and laws. No matter what you were told, and if you don't like it, then go on welfare. Go become a parasite or get the fuck out. Go live back with mommy and daddy. And you know what? Go work for Starbucks and then have a conversation. We'd like to have a conversation about race. And see. <laughs> it's great seeing baristas never happy. Physical maintenance. Okay, uh, if I am correct on this, nobody likes a fat fuck or a fat bitch. Nobody does. Nobody does. Nope. It's gross. It's disgusting. And you're not. And I don't. You can. <laughs> well, that's not fair. I, I, I'm not telling you what's fair, kids. I'm telling you what is. And you can run around and pout like you did in college about how unfair the real world is and that gravity pulls down and water is wet and, and the air blows. You can complain about all those things. It's not going to change it. There's a ton of studies out there that show more attractive people get the job. That Why? Because other people, half the people in the, under the employee of the company, want to look at that person and say, gee, I want to fuck that person. And here's another little study you may have. I have to look it up. Uh, they found that if you have an attractive young woman, guess what happens to the productivity of the males in that office? <gasps> so I don't know about women, because women are just like, eh, I want candles. I don't care if there's a hot guy here. I, I don't even know if women... Do women work? Do, I'm kidding. I know a lot of you girls do work. But I, don't, I wouldn't know. It would not work the same way, because girls are like, sex? Ew, gross. Why would I want I'm just going to look at him and think about candles. So I guess if we had candles, we brought candles in. And Lululemon yoga pants, that would get girls' production up. I don't know. Anyway, the larger point is uh, prettier people get the jobs. And here's, here's another thing, along with physical maintenance, is if you're a fat fuck, you probably stink. Nobody likes working next to a fat, disgusting person. All right, so 
lose the weight. I'm not saying you gotta you gotta look like uh, uh, Jack Donovan. And ladies, I'm not saying you gotta look like. Uh, I don't want to give any of these girls credit because they all they all got by on their looks. I'm not saying who, who's a girl that's good looking, but got by on her intelligence in the internet's world. Who is a girl? Can we say Julie Borowski? She kind of was one of the original ones. I have a little bit more respect for her than the other ones. Yeah, let's say Julie Borowski. Um, th th that's who they want to see, all right? Uh, all right? But you don't have to. You don't have to look like that perfect specimen of human, male or female. Um, but you do have to be presentable. You basically have to make people not want to throw up when they see you, okay? And if you can get really good looking, if you can make yourself look like a 9 or a 10, uh, you're going to get a lot more opportunities and promotions than you would if you are a 5 or a 6. So, and you, again, I'm not, I'm not a 9. I couldn't do short. <sighs> Even with these amazing looks. Uh, yeah, I, I, but you get up there, you get hot. A lot more doors open up for you. Uh, communications. Um... What they taught you in college about communication skills and writing and everything they taught you in school, like K through 12, is all bullshit. Uh, you need to be clear and concise. You need to sit down and bang out your memo. I've never really had a problem with this, but apparently everyone, every corporate, we have a problem with communications. We need critical thinking. And what they're talking about there is not critical thinking, what your limp dick fucking professors told you, which is just Marxist thought. Okay, uh, critical thinking is basically assessing things in the real world. The, look up the reality principle. I wrote a post about it. It's the reality principle that they're looking for. They need you to solve a problem. They need you to be able to identify a problem and then think through it and solve it. And if you can't solve it, then you are able to clearly and succinctly, mind you, this is why I charge people more when they write eight pages when there's one question at the end, um, which is fine by me because you can pay me to read. Um, those are the skills they're looking for. Because yeah, here's, here's a perfect, it's a microcosmic example, but let's use it. I've had, pay, I've had people, I've charged 50, 60 bucks for an email response. And normally, it, it, which would mean 60, 70 bucks for a video response. And it was one question, the question was very easily answered, but it took me damn well near 20 minutes to read through their fucking three-page email. Okay? That cost is passed on and shows in your work performance. Whereas I had one guy, it was brilliant. He's like, Clary test on blah. I forgot who it was, but it was Clary test on this person. Boom, done. And I think I charged him only like 17 or 18 bucks because I didn't have to dick around reading through this shit. So uh, if you can be succinct and an efficient communicator, not fucking Shakespeare, not you English majors trying to show off using uh, verbose words that no one's going to use. Uh, just be succinct and to the point. You do a lot better. Um, and then I did have to point this out. Physically or verbally unpleasant. <laughs> I don't know. I, this is going to be for the guys. Uh, in part because I think guys are more guilty than this than women. Although women do every once in a while. But I think I, I see more men doing this. Guys, you go into the office and you shut the fuck up, okay? Now, if your boss is a dick or your boss is a bad boss or something like that, that's fine. There's no reason to get angry. Uh, although every great once in a while it does pay to storm into your boss's office, slam the door shut, and read him the riot act with the blinds open so people can see you reading him the riot act. That every once in a while is called for. But you got to be willing to get fired after that. But outside of those rare instances... Physically unpleasant. Don't get physically abusive with people or be, uh, okay, you know, hygiene, basic, all that stuff. But then verbally unpleasant, you know, this is, look, I'm not a big one for HR, fucking, uh, not diversity training, sensitivity training and uh, sexual harassment training. But fucking Christ, I guess there's that many stupid people that you need to be told not to talk about a women's set of tits at the office. Do we, do we really need to do this? See, that's the problem. There's like nobody... If, if you people exist, you are slowing down corporate America and, and government as well by so much by having us have to take these stupid, completely unnecessary sexual harassment training and, and sensitivity trainings. I, 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 I don't know how your parents raised you that you thought you could curse and swear at an office. I don't know where the lack of the, well, probably your father wasn't around, so you thought not wearing deodorant was okay because your mom told you, you smell just fine the way you are. You're a vegan and you let the armpit hair grow. I don't know. But 
if, if you, I can't help you if you're that stupid. I really can't. If you think that you can curse and swear, threaten people, become physically abusive at, a, at an office, you fuck, then you're going to go to jail. You're certainly not going to be working there much longer. So, uh, from my experience, often as a result, it costs thousands. Yeah, it costs thousands. It costs your employers thousands of dollars because it costs them thousands of dollars to hire you. And then I think, what was it? The HR guy, he told me, you know, it costs about half a person's salary to hire them. By the time you're done processing everything and all that, and before, like, you, it, it costs half the salary. I looked at it, I said, cool, well, give me a 50% raise. He just looked at me like, you asshole. <laughs> So there's a lot of investment in infrastructure that goes into employ it goes into employing new people, um, and I can see where corporations don't want to hire people. I can see where you fucking talentless people, genuinely talented, I mean that, who work at fast food, and uh, and you want fifteen dollars an hour. I I can see where that level of entitlement, combined with these problems, a mentioned uh, a aforementioned before, uh, I can see where that. I could totally side with the corporation. Like, I wouldn't want to hire a fucking... Even right now, I, I'm one of my best friends. All of his problems come from employees. Like, fuck that. I'm never hiring an employee. I outsource. Even Chad Elkins kind of a pain in the ass, isn't he? Yeah, you know that Chad Elkins fucker. And that Matt Boldoni guy, you know, he, he, he kind of mails it in every once in a while. You, you want to employ those guys? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. But anyway, yeah, if you're so sad that you don't know to put on deodorant and all that, here, here's, here's to my client. Fuck them. What is this our responsibility? I mean, yeah, if, if the, the neck beard comes in unshaven with Dorito or cheesy puff powder on it, what am I in, stuck in his beard? What? You think there's salvation? You think there's... This is where the real world will take care of these problems for us. We don't have to worry about it. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the basics on grooming and physical appearance at work. Hope that helps out the few of you that might have paid attention. Best of luck to you. Toodles.